today I'm going to show you how to set up a Stripe account so that you can start accepting payments online. And just to be clear, Stripe is a point of sale system online where you can take payments in the form of credit cards as well as Google Pay and Apple Pay, which I bet a lot of your customers would love to use, especially because everyone's moving to mobile. They can just do a little double click it's already in their phone and they can pay you right there on the spot. So let's go into that today. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa from Pretty Fabulous and I help online businesses create beautiful digital downloads using Adobe InDesign. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Tuesday or extra videos like today because this lesson is part of Thrivecart Starter Kit. So I've created an entire starter kit. There are three different parts in it. One teaches you how to use the checkout cart system, which is the best system out there on the market. The second course teaches you how to set up Thrivecart Learn to host all of your courses. I recently migrated everything from Podia over to Thrivecart. I love it, it's amazing, and it works perfectly. Um, and then a third part of the Thrivecart Starter Kit is templates to get you started. Because sometimes you just don't know, like how do I arrange it? Do I put testimonies on the right? Do I put the product on the left? What do I say? So I've created templates for you. You can start using them right away today. Just edit them with your own images, spruce up that text with your own copy and you are good to go. So, and it teaches you everything from A to Z, like just how to get started all the way to how to make your sale. And we're talking about both digital products and physical products. So if you've never heard of Thrivecart, I do have a free course called Thrivecart 101. It is a very quick webinar that walks you through Thrivecart versus like everything like Podia, Teachable, Thinkific, Kajabi, Samcart, ClickFunnels, FG Funnels, like which one is the best and why did I choose that? I pretty much, if you ask any of my friends, I have tried every single thing out there. I've even tried Kartra. So um, to say that I think Thrivecart is the best is actually from experience of spending tons of money on all of those other platforms. So. All right, you're just gonna go to stripe.com, no fancy URL, and you're gonna click start now, and it will prompt you to go to the sign up page, which as I mentioned before, a thousand percent, use your real name and use a business email. Don't use something weird like, I love my cute boyfriend at gmail.com. All right, once that's in, you're just gonna click create account. So we are using lisa at lisasiefert.com, which is my email for my author name. And so we just have to go ahead and verify that. You'll get an email to your inbox that says, verify your email to start using Stripe. So pretty easy, just click that button and you're good to go. You'll be taken to a screen that says, activate payments on your account. We are going to definitely do that. And now we're gonna go through and start adding our information. So we are, I am in the US, <laughs> um, but obviously if you're in a different country, you can put that. You're gonna put your address and make sure it is your business address. My advice is always to use a UPS box. It's a real address. And then also because you do have to give your address to customers in some cases on invoices, then you don't have to worry about privacy for someone showing up at your house and knocking on your door. Um, and then type of business, I am a sole proprietor, but if you have filed articles of incorporation for another type of S Corp or LLC, you're going to put company in there um, and obviously nonprofit if that's your what you are. And because Stripe does work with banks and with the IRS to send in your month end or your year end 1099, you do need to use your real legal name um, in case you were thinking about using a stunt double name or something else, uh, your date of birth, and you will have to add your phone number. Don't worry, it's just for Stripe. They're not going to give it out. And the last four digits of your social security number on the screen. Next, they wanna know what kind of business you have. So I have books, so I type that in, but over here you can see they have a huge list of different ways that you can classify yourself. Uh, under digital products, I'm going to put books and for my website, I'm going to put in um, lisasiefert.com and product description, I write cozy mystery books. The next tab is fulfillment details and you have a few different choices. Digital products usually are a day, but I'm gonna put two weeks because I also sell physical books. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue. 
Now this is really important, support details. This is what's going to show up on their credit card statement. So I just leave my website, lisaseifert.com. That way, in case they don't remember that they bought a book for me or my name or anything else, they at least know they can go to that website and then be reminded about who I am instead of just putting a dispute in. And then also short and book descriptor, I put books over here so it'll show books. So in theory, one of the two should help jog your memory as well as all of this other information down here. This is really easy. You're just gonna select whatever bank you use. Unfortunately, I use Wells Fargo, which is literally the worst bank in the world, um, but you can go ahead and set up everything uh, right there. And if you don't see your bank in the list, you can usually, um, like Citibank isn't here. All, it pretty much has every major bank that you can connect to. And you're gonna put in your routing number and your account number, double, triple, quadruple check those to make sure those get input correctly. For two-step authentication, I just use SMS. It's not a big deal um, instead of an authenticator app. I tried the authenticator app. It was like such a pain. I would highly advise against it. It's just way easier to get a text message. The next one is automated sales tax calculation. And for this one, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I put in books, um, but if you have digital magazines, digital products, you can choose that as well. Or if you sell software or something else. And the reason I say don't worry about it is because you're probably going to use a checkout cart like Thrivecart if you have not checked out my Thrivecart 101 webinar. Um, but that's going to be easiest. Uh, and it's most likely it's not going to ever have to charge taxes because you're not going to send invoices out from Stripe, which you can do. I think that's a little weird, um, but I'm just going to choose books and continue. I do not know why this is in here, climate contributions. This is to me ridiculous and stupid that this is even an option in here. 100% just click not right now and skip this and don't put anything in here. And at the very end for summary, you're going to review all of your details and hit submit and you're all set. And if all else fails and you make a mistake, you can simply go to your account settings, account details, scroll all the way to the bottom and click close account. And this will simply close out and delete this whole account. And you can go ahead and start over in case you make a mistake. You can send out an invoice directly from Stripe, but I highly a thousand percent advise against this. I think it's a bad idea. But if you're like, I just want to save money and not go through you know, a checkout cart system like Thrivecart or something else, you could do that. So the first thing you're going to do is under payments, you're going to go to invoices. And before you send out an invoice, I would go to brand settings and go ahead and put your branding in there. And again, it just helps so that people do not dispute credit card charges. So for icon over here, you can go ahead and add anything you want. So anything you add here for icon has to be under 500 uh, megabytes. And I just put the pretty fabulous circle logo because it's really meant to have a circle. So don't try to do a square. And then same thing over here where it says logo that will actually appear here on the invoice. And then for the brand colors, the brand color will be this color at the top and the accent color will actually just be that button at the bottom. So um, customer portal will use those same colors, hosted invoices, as well as invoice PDF. Well, actually invoice PDF, you can see uses nothing but uh, the logo. So, you know, as I always say, be consistent, make sure people don't have a reason to think this is junk mail or something weird or something creepy. So just make sure you use the same thing on everything. And that's how you set up your brand settings. And then once you save those changes, then you can go back in and send an invoice. So we're right back here at invoices and we're gonna click create an invoice. And you can see we have our branding and our logo already set up just how we thought it was going to be. And you can send this to a particular customer um, or you can go ahead and just um, add a customer. So you can add a customer if you just click add and I can send this to, let's say my alter ego, Lisa London. So we'll send this to Lisa London author at, um, can I even spell, Lisa London author at gmail.com. And we'll go ahead and save that customer inside of here. And we'll say we're charging her for a custom planner design. And this custom planner design is going to be $5,000. Uh, and then it, I can also add any taxes or coupons um, or anything for her ahead of time, uh, but I don't need to, so I don't have VAT here. And I can just add a memo that says, thank you, uh, thanks you, thank you for your order. 
Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to actually just email the invoice to the client. Um, you can automatically charge a payment method on file. Uh, Again, I would make sure that you have verbally agreed on this and have this in writing before you do that and send them a reminder, letting them know you're going to put that charge through. There's nothing scarier than getting a notice on your credit card that you have, like maybe this is a fraud or something else. I think it's always 100% better, even if they've agreed to pay, to just send the invoice to the client um, with the payment page so then they can just do the payment themselves. Um, so as far as adding any options, I think you're just going to leave this as ACA credit or that they can use a card. I think those are the only things that are available you can do. And then you can go over here to review invoice um, and go ahead and you could go ahead and send this invoice. So be really careful because invoices can't be edited after they're sent because otherwise, you know, somebody will get an invoice for 5,000 and then you'll change it after the fact to 8,000 and all of a sudden they're paying for 8,000. And that's why you can't change it after the fact. So that is what your invoice will look like. To add a subscription, we're going to go over here to Payments, Subscription, and at the very top, we're going to click Create Subscription. And inside of here, we're just going to charge that same Lisa London person. And for product, we're going to have to add a new product because we have to create a subscription product. So we're going to call this um, My Fabulous Monthly Membership. Uh, and we're going to say standard pricing. There is different pricing back packaged graduated volume pricing um, but we're just going to do a standard 97 dollars per month recurring one time i don't know that's kind of weird i don't know why you'd have a one-time payment for a, a subscription um billing periods you have daily weekly monthly every three six yearly or you could do a custom one if you're going to charge people every two weeks or something like that but we have a monthly one and we are not going to meter the usage um at the end of each billing period we're just going to leave it as is i don't need any special ids and we're going to say add products so now we can see that we have one product for 97 dollars per month and it's going to charge them it's going to start today uh, and just go on for perpetuity now over here I could add a free trial if I wanted so we could give them a 10-day free trial and then they still enter their credit card information but it won't actually charge them until May 1st after those 10 days are up so for payment method, we are just going to say email invoice for client to pay manually. Um, we're not going to just start. You can actually just start charging people on the back end. But as I mentioned, like just like the invoice, I highly advise against that. So I would never, ever, ever do that. Um, and then that's all you need to do. And then over here, you can just click start subscription. All right, that's a wrap. Remember, I always advise using a Thrive Card as your front end checkout system. Although, as you saw here, you could use Stripe if you so wanted. Uh, but if you're going to sell anything that's a little bit more involved, I highly recommend Thrive Card. Plus, it's a great way to deliver the products without having to email people. It does everything automatically for you. So remember, I have two links below. One is Thrive Card 101. Just is it worth it? In case you're like, what is Thrive Card? And I'm not even sure how it works. And and how does it compare to Kajabi and Podia and everything else? Uh, and that is totally free. And then I also have the Thrivecart Starter Kit, which has everything that you need from A to Z, like to get started, to set up a checkout, uh, to create products to sell, how to create order bumps, and then Thrivecart Learn is another course inside the starter kit that teaches you how to host all of your courses, how to migrate people from Podia or Teachable or anything else over to Thrivecart. And then you also get Thrive Cart checkout templates. Everything that you need to like be up and running yesterday with like the greatest online checkout system ever is waiting for you down below. All right. I hope everyone's having a fabulous and wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.